Hi there, it's Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. Today, I'm gonna to walk through the steps that we use to create our power plasma, which is basically taking somebody's blood and through a process that we have specific to R3, we're able to activate one's own stem cells and really um, amp up the potential results for patients, whether it's uh, knee, hip, shoulder, um, you name it. So after uh, a few years of research, we've implemented Power Plasma, which entails taking a person's own blood, such as uh, this just got dropped off here at the lab, um, and taking this, processing it as I'm gonna show you, and we're able to activate the stem cells in a patient's blood to then give back to them for a specific problem, like knee pain or hip pain or whatnot, and gives much better results than just using PRP. Okay, so let's get started. So the first step is to take the blood, and this blood has anticoagulant in it, all right, so it's not clotting. It's been sitting here about five minutes, okay? And first thing I'm gonna do is just take an alcohol swab and clean off the tip there of the syringe. Now, these PRP kits uh, we've been using for years. It's part of the Rebella PRP system. Um, these kits are approved um, by the FDA. You can see the insignia here. They come sterilely packaged. All right, so let's open that up. And they are specifically made so that <clears throat> the blood will go in and then we'll process it as I'm going to show you to really concentrate one's growth factors, um, platelets, as well as, as you'll see, the stem cells here in just a bit. All right, it's very exciting, right? All right, so that's right around 30 cc's, okay? Just close the top. So next step is we're gonna take the blood and we're gonna put it into this spinning machine called a centrifuge. But first, we have to make sure that we properly counterbalance so that as the centrifuge is spinning, it doesn't um, basically get off balance and cause a big problem and break the machine. All right, so now we have our blood that is in the kit and we're going to need to counterbalance it, right? So you have to have another kit on the other side so that the machine doesn't get off kilter. And it weighs in at 76.1 grams. So the saline kit needs to weigh approximately the same and it's close, 75.7. All right, so now we're ready for the next step. <clears throat> so the next step is we're going to take our blood and put it into the centrifuge and spin it with the counterbalance, okay? For this, we use our Rebella PRP centrifuge. Very heavy duty, all right? So that goes in one bucket, and then this is within 0.2 grams, so we're going to put that in the bucket right across from it. Close it, and then we push this twice. And you can see the numbers starting to go up as it gets up to the 4,000 RPMs. So we'll wait the five minutes, and then we'll get back in action. All right, if anybody's sleeping, that'll wake you up, huh? What you have is the red blood cells are the heaviest and they fall to the bottom when you do the spin. We don't want them. Red blood cells are actually harmful to cartilage, so we want to dispose of them. The top layer is mostly plasma. Plasma has a lot of water in it. It's got a lot of electrolytes in it and it does have um, some platelets and growth factors, but really this layer between the red blood cells and the straw color is what is liquid gold. And that has a ton of platelets in it and growth factors. And 
in a minute here, well, in a few minutes, we're going to act, use our activator to activate the stem cells in that layer. So it will be full of mesenchymal stem cells from your own blood, tons of growth factors, and the platelets, okay? And that's a recipe for healing. So this is our benchtop processor. This took us two years to formulate. Um, I'll show you later the uh, five iterations that it took us to get this perfect. But let's start by very simply the processor. Now what you'll see is as we turn the lever on the back, we're pushing up the really good stuff. Now we're going to collect it with this 60cc syringe. It is going into the top syringe. We just want to get just a tiny bit so we know that we got all of that liquid gold layer called the Buffy coat between the red blood cells and the PRP. So here we go. See that little flash of red that just got into the syringe? That's all we want, okay? So that step is done. I'll just take off. The specimen is looking just like a straw color. It's perfect. We have our PRP with plasma here, and we're going to use another sterile kit, okay? To do the second spin. Why do we do a second spin? Well, it's very important because what it does is it increases the non inflammatory leukocytes and decreases the overly inflammatory ones. So basically, it's less painful to a patient, okay? And better outcomes. All right, so let's pump this into the kit. All right, so we're going to weigh our PRP. That's 60.6. Very close. Good enough. Now that we have our specimen and our counterbalance ready to go, we're going to spin it again. But once again, it'll take five minutes for the spin once it gets up to 4,000 RPMs. And then after the five minutes is up, it'll take a couple minutes to kind of stop rotating. So we'll come back when it's ready to open. All right, second spin is done. Result, but basically what we've done is really amped up the growth factors that we want and tamp down the ones we don't, as well as the white blood cell. So now we're going to transfer the PRP into the syringes, um, and we're almost getting ready for treatment. That's five cc's times three. So the last step is our secret sauce. This is what really turns PRP into power plasma. So I've got one of the vials here. I'm going to put a stopper on it. And then I'm going to take the other vial. Um, and we've got our device here set at 10 minutes for each slot. goes into the slots and 
this is now giving four separate wavelengths of light that took years of research to figure out that will activate the mesenchymal stem cells in your blood. It will increase the growth factor amount by 20 to 30 percent and it will increase the amount of time that those growth factors are released. Normally when you have PRP the growth factors are released within about three four hours. This allows them to be released over a period of four weeks okay so you get a much better healing effect from it so this is the final step you can see the two syringes with the prp in it being photo activated and this is our secret sauce there are four different wavelengths of light that are hitting the prp at a very specific wavelengths there's a red orange blue and yellow light that are hitting these um, we hit them for a very specific amount of time that has been shown in research studies to um, activate the mesenchymal stem cells in the blood as well as increase the amount of growth factors by 25-30% than you would otherwise get. And in addition to increasing those growth factors, what happens is you get a delayed release of those growth factors. Normally PRP releases them all within just a few hours. The problem with that is you only get a healing response, you know, for a pretty short period of time. But when you can delay that uh, over a period of three to four weeks, which is what this does, then you can get a much stronger healing response over a much longer period of time. So when you add in the more growth factors, the stems, activated stem cells, and the longer period of time that these act in the body, the result is power plasma. All right, so the activation is done. And you can see that it doesn't cause the PRP to clot. Normal activation really causes this to clot, but it doesn't. And we're gonna get it over to the doctor now for use.